Funnily enough, we haven't heard from any introverts tonight at all. But anyway, we love sending our roving reporter, Justin Rowlett, off to weird and wonderful places. And tonight, he finds himself in an airbase in Wiltshire, hiding some pretty remarkable secrets. Go on then, Justin, let us in on them. Well, there are some stories that are an absolute delight to report. And this, Christine, is one of them. Doesn't look very promising, does it? A rusty old aircraft hangar on the outskirts of Swindon on a drizzly autumn evening. But just wait till you see what's inside. There are six of these hangars on the site and they contain 18,000 priceless objects. These are objects that tell the story of this country's history. Now, first of all, we have to get inside, Ooh, which is a bit tricky. These contain the big stuff. The Science Museum doesn't have room to display in London. So come inside and have a look. Just look at this. Each of these hangars covers an acre. That's the area of a football field. And look at it, stacked to the ceiling with some of the most incredible and bizarre artefacts imaginable. Artefacts like this, the first vehicle to cross the Antarctic. The 1958 journey took 90 days with the Tucker Snowcat. It averaged 22 miles a day in temperatures below minus 30 degrees centigrade. And just around the corner is the heaviest exhibit, the last surviving Fleet Street printing press. Built in the 1920s, this was once the fastest in the world, printing the Daily Mail until 1987. And there are thousands of other surprising items. An electric car that's over a century old and still runs, the world's only mass-produced amphibious car, and a channel tunnel boring machine from the turn of the last century. It barely got 100 metres. In the 60s, a key part of the country's defences was blue steel. This nuclear weapon had the power to destroy a city at the touch of a button. Or how about this? The Praying Mantis was the submarine in the film For Your Eyes Only, where James Bond just manages to escape its deadly pincers. Well, I'm joined by Matt Moore from the Science Museum. Now, Matt, this is the most extraordinary collection. I mean, just take a look at the things we've got around us here. We've got a collection of mobility vehicles, some of them dating back to the 1930s. Just over here, we've got one of the world's first analogue computers. Now, at the entrance there, I noticed the world's first ever bit of reinforced concrete. Mm. Then we had the world's first ATM machine. We've got these, some, the, Concord, the seats from the very first Concord. Somewhere else, you've got the entire Concord. Now, what is the logic of this collection? Well, there isn't any real logic, except that we built these things. These are the first in science. They're the first engineering. They're the real greats of our, of our history. So this is man's development of technology. So why, for example, have you got this bike? Well, this bike is Chris Boardman's. Uh, Lotus carbon fibre bike. He won the 1992 Olympics on it. And we've got it because he won on it. Social history. Social history, absolutely. But secondly, because it's made out of carbon fibre. And that was a new material at the time. And this now carbon fibre is quite common on bikes and other things, isn't it? It is. It's, it's one of these everyday items we see around us now. But what really strikes me coming here is the way that you've displayed this. I mean, this is a, an aircraft hangar that's mm. become a warehouse, and you've got all these incredible, unique historical objects sort of wrapped up away from view. Now, why do you store these amazing things like this? Well, in 1980, when we acquired this site, we had lots and lots of big stuff, cars, planes, snowmobiles, all sorts of different things, and we needed somewhere big to put them, so we bought them here. Now, what do you want to do with the site? We want to develop the site and make a massive new museum on this site called Inspired. Inspired a new museum. How much is that going to cost? That's going to cost a bargain, 62 million. A bargain, 62 million. Well, that, Christine, is a lot of money. But I've got to say, as far as I'm concerned, that would be money very, very well spent. Thank you very much. Justin, if you want to support the museum or find out some more museum facts, you can visit our One Show website. On the first Strictly Come Dancing of the new season this Saturday, we'll get to meet all the contestants. We already know one of them because he's all ours. <laughs> Dom Littlewoods, not what you'd call a hot favourite exactly, but Lilia, his partner, does seem to know her onions. Let's have a quick look at, his, uh, at this work in progress. 